Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, of course. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce myself. I am Dr. Mahesh Das, uh, the eighth president of the Boston Architectural College. On this momentous day, we welcome the BAC's graduates, their families, friends, alumni, and esteemed guests to our commencement ceremony for the class of 2022. So graduates, you're surrounded by your family and friends who have been your incredibly strong support system. So let's give them a round of applause, shall we? Excellent. So uh, join me in also welcoming the guests on the stage. I ask uh, that each guest stand as I call their name, and please remain standing. The first person I'm delighted to introduce to you is our Doctor of Design, Honoris Casa recipient, and our keynote speaker, Billy Chien. Also joining are Judith Nitsch, Chair of the Board of Trustees. And I would uh, certainly would like to request you to hold your applause till we recognize everyone. So we'll applause, we'll give a big applause at the end. Vic Liptak, Vice President of Academic Affairs. <laughs> Beth Lendell Garver, Dean of Practice. Joshua Thompson, graduate valedictorian. Gabriella Lamoureux, undergraduate valedictorian. Richard Griswold, Dean of Students. Sydney Leo, Vice President of Finance and Administration. Heather Sullivan, Vice President of Institutional Advancement. Don Hansiker, Dean of the School of Design Studies. Maria Belalta, Dean of the School of Landscape Architecture. Denise Raj, Dean of the School of Interior Architecture. Karen Nelson, Dean of the School of Architecture. Roger Brown, Secretary of the Board of Trustees, who could not be here today, I understand. Uh, Rebecca chabot Wifrick, Associate Vice President of Enrollment Management. Scott Harrison, Associate Director of Academic Affairs. Then we have uh, Peter Atwood, Director of Digital Media and this year's Ed Toomey Award winner. Sarah Redmore, Director of Undergraduate Interior Architecture. Margarita Iglesia, Director of MLA Online Course Instruction. Eleni Glekas, Director of Historic Preservation. Colin Riley, Assistant Director of Real Estate Development. Bethany Fantasia, Associate Vice President of Enrollment Strategy and Services. Kelly Josephson, Associate Vice President for Data and Analytics. Janet Roche, Chair of the Alumni Association. Manuela Mariani, Assistant Director of Foundation Studios. Lee Peters, Director of Foundation Studios. Mark Rokamatu, Director of Special Projects and Faculty. Luis Montalvo, Director of Media Arts. Ashley Tenenbaum, Director of Collaborative Practice. Ian Taberner, Director of Master's Thesis. Robert Gillig, Director of Advanced Architecture Studios and Building Systems. I would also like to recognize in the audience today our alumna, former trustee, Carol Wedge, who has tirelessly supported us. 
Great, you may now be seated. Now it is my pleasure to introduce to you uh, the chair of the BAC's Board of Trustees, Judith Nech. She is a founding principal of Nech Engineering Inc., a 100-plus person firm headquartered in Boston and with offices in Washington, D.C., Worcester, and Lawrence, Massachusetts. A spirited mentor of female engineers, Judy served on the Worcester Polytechnic Institute board for 22 years. She is a fellow of ASCE and many other uh, national organizations. So please help me welcome Judy Nech. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you, President Zass. My husband was a BAC graduate, and his graduation would have been, or was, 60 years ago. Um, he's been gone for 10 years, but he'd be very proud of the fact that I was here essentially representing him today. So graduates and your families, I'm honored to be here today to help celebrate with you. This is my first uh, commencement as chair of the BAC's Board of Trustees. So I think I'm feeling, you know, some of the emotions that you probably are, joy, proud, trepidation, um, but also very much a lot of gratitude. Um, and I think for your classmates, your teachers, your loved ones who helped you get here today. According to neuroscientists, you know, as an engineer, I gotta bring in another scientist here, um, those connections are what we all need to thrive. I'm sure everyone here felt that need for connections during the quarantine over the past two plus years. And it's in communities like this one at the BAC where we grow, we learn, and we support each other. This special connection you've developed through your shared experiences at the BAC will last a lifetime. Nurture it, continue to reach out, and just because you are graduates doesn't mean the BAC family isn't here for you. We have your back. I can tell you from leading my own engineering firm and working with many, many designers and architects that the BAC is very highly thought of in the design professions, and I hope you are as proud of your BAC as I am. Um, your BAC education, you're proud of that, and that you continue to leverage the global alumni and friend network that we have. My wish for you graduates is to go out into the world and continue to grow, connect, and create community wherever you are, in whatever way that you can. Congratulations. Now back to President Zoss. Great. So thank you, Judy. Graduates, you are the bona fide class of greatness. You have emerged victorious from the toughest of times. Working from home has taught us a lesson wholesome. Humanity has always worked from home, our only home at any time. A lonely blue orb of infinite stories in the celestial tome. Informed by these times, we came up with our vision we call Back to the Future. So, I'd like to take you on a special journey, two decades hereafter. I invite you to hop on our electric DeLorean the ultimate time machine, charged by the BAC's geothermal electromagnetic induction. <laughs> Come on in, do not hesitate. Let's not wait. Now, let's rev up to precisely 88 miles per hour. Let's travel to May 27, 2042, for an exciting tour Vroom, we hop on the magical car. In the year 2042, we have arrived together. Let's see what you're all up to now after a 20-year run. 
The planet is powered by renewable energy, pure and clean. Society today is free from injustices and bias. The world is free from brutality and senseless violence. The biosphere is resplendent and thriving with Elan. Thanks to the spirited work of your generation, you have become visionary leaders. You lead with humility and are guided by purpose, helming entrepreneurial startups, nonprofits, and global firms. You lead with values and vision that your work affirms. Among you are leaders of intergovernmental commitments on climate health. Your voices resonate on the world stage with strength. Among you are the best-selling authors of consequence. You are undaunted activists and empathetic policy makers. You are in demand as creative insurgents and thought leaders. And yes, some of you have won prestigious design prizes. You are the change makers and paradigm shifters. Yet, you are servant leaders on a mission with grace. You are the generation that has made the difference. So let's hop on the DeLorean again, all the cashieries and blackberries. <laughs> let's head back to the past, to 2022 graduates, and honor the poet of architecture, Billy Chen. Let us mark your special day with great jubilation. Congratulations. Now, to introduce our valedictorian students, I would like to invite Dean Beth Lundell Garber to the stage. On behalf of practice faculty, staff, and partners, I'm honored to introduce to you two exemplary BACers. Our undergraduate valedictorian, Gabriella Lamoureux, and Joshua Thompson, our graduate valedictorian. Gabby and Josh have shown us five ways to go forth from this day as you practice design. Here's a quick countdown to help you remember five of the six Bs on the pin of your hat. Five, be a pioneer, a mover and a shaker, a trailblazer, an informed yet daring decision maker. Earlier this year, Joshua became a licensed architect. And this summer, he's starting his own firm with his longtime mentor. Four, be a great hall a convener making the first toast, a collaborator, a host, flexible and adaptive to what others need most. Gabriella was a student ambassador welcoming new and prospective students to the college. Three, be an archangel. Arch means chief in Greek, and angelos means messenger, a leader, and an effective communicator while also earning his certificate in historic preservation at the BAC, Joshua connects stories of cultural heritage and place within his work. Two, be a landmark, a guide visible from afar. Orient others along their purpose and find your North Star. Gabriella was an orientation leader for the Office of Student Life. And Joshua spent years, decades, guiding grade school students to careers where they would thrive. One, be a banyan tree with a sprawling network of roots that shelter and protect. Gabriella finds harmony where nature and built environments intersect. This passion for the earth brought her to the BAC to address climate change 
and leave a positive legacy. With healing and commitment to treat the earth with respect and a lifelong call to ensure that life itself is well kept. These two BAC years have shown us how to be a pioneer, a great hall, an archangel appointee, a landmark, a connected and mighty banyan tree. Like Gabby and Josh, you, both those of you in the room and those of you who are here in spirit, are designers working beyond the walls of convention. You are navigating the triumphs and tragedies of life and school and family and work with unrivaled fortitude and grace. So now, please, let's put our hands together to welcome our class valedictorians with celebratory embrace. I am pleased to see you all, especially after three years of seeing your faces on Zoom. Uh, President Mahesh Das, honorable deans, professors, and faculty, we couldn't have made it here today without your nurturing and passion for coloring our thinking and guiding us to arrive at this culmination of our education. Thank you. Graduating seniors of class of 2022, and to all of you present, I have to say, I found it difficult to create this speech as my journey towards this moment has been sprinkled with so many enriching experiences. So I decided to share three stories which I hope will resonate with you. The essence of the first story is, remember where and why you started to appreciate where you arrived. I thought of my little village, Cetata, where I grew up in Romania. And I thought of the simple life I lived with my family on our little farm. Like any child, I dreamed big. I wanted to travel the world, become someone my family would be proud of, and make a difference wherever I end up. And today, all of the things I dreamt of are true. I have moved across the ocean, became my own person, and by receiving this education, I have found my voice through which I'm hoping to make a difference. Only four years ago, for some even more, we sat through our first class in the Foundation Studio, we were introduced to exacto knives, trace paper, chipboard, and balsa wood, and we couldn't believe how cool we looked with our drafting tubes in the subway. We were all excited about our sketch models, and we all dreamed we could be the next Zaha Hadid or Frank Gehry. <laughs> over these years, I've met some of the most amazing people, some of which I became friends over with pulling all-nighters and building models on the fifth floor or working late and laughing out of exhaustion with my community practice gang in the computer lab on the fourth floor. As students, we learned a lesson from each other, resiliency. Two years ago, we have witnessed and made history during this global pandemic, being essentially locked into our homes and having to do classes over Zoom. Everyone in college during normal times stresses about test scores, but on top of that, we also had to pass like a thousand COVID tests. <laughs> I'm proud to say that despite the challenging times, BAC has proved my peers and me with a place to foster our intelligence and acknowledge the world outside the class Zoom room. During our history classes, we were taught to question what goes on in the everyday life. We were introduced to different schools of thought, religions, laws, cultures, and races outside our own. And through studios, we were encouraged to think outside the box, problem solve, and develop our design skills. With this in mind, the qualities we have gained and the well-rounded people we have become have given us an advantage after we leave BAC. Some of you might have party last night or are looking forward to celebrating tonight. And you should, I know I will. Um, but what I wanna emphasize is this. Savor the taste of your triumph today. Don't just swallow the moment whole without processing what's happening here. Look back over what you conquered and appreciate where you started why and what you went through. The essence of the second story is that success is fleeting, relationships are forever. Processing how I've gotten here today couldn't have happened without the unconditional love, support, and especially patience of my wonderful husband, Glenn. Thank you. 
Moreover, I want to express my deep gratitude to my beloved parents, and brothers and sisters, who are my biggest fans and cheer me on my whole life, but especially over these past four years from overseas. And I'm most grateful to God for the grace, talents, and gifts he gave me, but also for the courage and resilience to push through when I doubted myself. Graduates, look to your right and to your left and appreciate the faces of the people who nurtured our emotional, financial, or social needs during these past few years. I hope I don't just speak for myself, but I know by arriving at this moment meant we're all sacrificed a few relationships. Working hard is good, but it should not be done at the expense of relationships without, with others. Personally, looking back at the stress of this year, I was paid for by a lack of attending to my relationships in my life. This is a self-reflection and a lesson learned, and a lesson learned needs to be shared. We'll always have ambitions and goals we we'll all want to achieve, but nothing is more important than healthy relationships. My last story I wanted to share with you is preceded by a quote of poet Robert Frost. Two roads diverge in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that made all the difference. This quote resonates with me because I've chosen both roads at different times in my life. Some of you may look upon me and think that by being valedictorian, I have it all together, and that's far from the truth. This education means a lot to me, and it's in fact a second chance at education, at building something meaningful. 13 years ago, I had a chance of applying to an architecture school, but the failure of my friends, who also tried and got in, but struggled and had a difficult time during architecture school, dissuaded me from pursuing my dream. I didn't have the self-confidence and the inner strength to follow up my passion. I let self-doubt define me, so I chose an easy path. I settled for less. I enrolled in another college in economics, and three years later, I graduated with no intention to pursue a career in that field. I was living aimlessly and driven by nothing. Fast forward to four years ago, reflecting upon my future, my beginnings, and my sensibilities towards design, and armed with maturity, perspective, and a reignited passion, I have decided to choose the hard path and started my journey at BEC, which led me here today, and what a difference it has made. We have all persevered, struggled, and sacrificed. We have all opened ourselves up for all that was new and challenging to make it here today. Let's continue to be inspired in the face of fear and not allow mistake to define us. We're defined by what we define failure as. It's not a failure if it leads to our success. It's a part of the process of becoming who we are. Let us use our education, lessons, shortcomings, quirks, beliefs, and personal lenses to help shape the corner of our world the best we can with the gifts we have. My fellow graduates, how will we use and share our gifts with the world? Thank you. Good afternoon, President Doss, family, friends, faculty and staff, distinguished and honored guests, and most importantly, congratulations to my fellow graduates. I know you must be thinking, man, he is so lucky. He gets to get up there and do a special speech in front of all of his peers and their families and his studio professors and some of those crits that were always very nice, so. <laughs> My uh, anxiety would really disagree with that. <laughs> I am truly overwhelmed with joy by this opportunity. Today, we are celebrating the countless hours of hard work and dedication it took to get us here. Like so many others, I have waited for this day for most of my life. Becoming an architect and building up my community with this knowledge is no longer just a dream. We stand on the shoulders of those who believed in us, the teachers and professors that never gave up on us, our family and friends who made sure we had eaten for the day, employers and mentors who took a chance on us, and quite possibly, most importantly, our beds for the extra support we needed during the two hours between studio time and our real jobs. We are forever grateful for the opportunities and care you have provided us. The world has changed since we all started this journey. Prior to 2020, few saw the value in an online design program, except for those at the BAC. 
We are pioneers of uncertainty. When everyone else was shutting down, we were still burning the midnight oil. Although we did not know the value of staying at home with our loved ones, enjoying the stillness in a world of distance, we discovered ourselves going into one another's most guarded lives through a screen. We became even more connected than before. We found everything didn't always have to be perfect. When things felt like an absolute dumpster fire, we persevered and learned to be our most authentic selves, which for me was truthfully tired. We did the impossible because possible was the only option. Yet here we are at the finish line. This final step for many of us has been years in the making, and yet it is the first step of a new beginning, the beginning of our future as architects and design professionals who will help shape the future of our communities in an ever-changing world. We have learned that committing to the work until it is finished is worth the struggle, and possibly, most importantly, no matter how hard you try, you should not convince yourself that you will finish that studio project presentation in the morning by waking up an hour earlier. <laughs> so whether you are a dreamer like me from Middle Tennessee, a tough as nails designer from New York, or a devoted mom and entrepreneur from Georgia, you did the impossible. We are resilient. We are innovators. And we are tired. <laughs> I leave you with this from Tennessee's First Lady, Miss Dolly Parton. I wish you joy and happiness, but above all of this, I wish you love. Thank you. Wonderful. What delightful speeches those were. I think you have uh, effectively captured really the journey all along, including the special times that we have all gone through in the last couple of years. So um, now, um, presentation of special degree. On August 3, 2021, our student Michael T. Barrett was taken away from us all in a tragic accident. During Michael's last CTX assignment, he wrote a manifesto for himself as an aspiring architect. It stated, I believe there exists a type of architecture that bridges uninhibited human creativity and the limitations of our environment. Design which embodies a code of ethics pertaining to the protection, sustainability, and health of our natural environment is the most worthwhile pursuit to me. Nature provides all we need." End quote. To honor Michael's memory on behalf of the BSC community, I'm pleased to posthumously grant him the degree of Bachelor of Architecture. We are honored to be joined by Michael's parents, Tony Barrett and Marina Campos Barrett. I would like to invite them to receive the diploma.
Thank you very much, everybody. One second. Um, my son, Michael, this was his dream. This was his North Star. This is what he wanted more than anything else. I refer to my son as Mickey Boy. I'm going to ask you to indulge me, and on the count of three, if you would, please, everybody scream, Mickey Boy, you did it. One, two, three. Mickey Boy, you did it! Thank you very much. Thank you, and Michael will forever be remembered as a beloved member of the BAC community. Each year, the BAC recognizes those individuals who have made transformational contributions to the world through design by awarding Doctor of Design Honoris Casa. This year, we have chosen legendary architect and professor Billy Chien. Billy Chien, along with her partner Todd Williams, founded their New York-based practice, Todd Williams Billy Chien Architects Partners in 1986. Their practice is committed to reflecting the values of nonprofit, cultural, and academic institutions towards an architecture of enduring vision. A sense of rootedness, light, texture, detail, and most of all, experience are at the heart of what they design. Some of their notable projects include the Asia Society of Hong Kong, the Tata Consultancy Services Campus in Mumbai, India, and the Barnes Foundation in Philadelphia. Their current work includes the US Embassy in Mexico City, the renovation of David Geffen Hall at uh, Lincoln, Lincoln Center, and uh, the Obama Presidential Center in Jackson Park, Chicago, all of which are currently in construction. For the past three decades, their dedication to their work has been recognized by numerous national and international citations, including the National Medal of the Arts from President Obama, the 2013 Firm of the Year Award from the American Institute of Architects, and the 2019 Premium Imperial presented by the Japan Art Association. In parallel to her practice, Billy teaches at Yale University as the Charles Guatme Professor in Practice. She currently serves as a fellow of the American Academy in Rome and has been inducted into the American Academy of Arts and Letters, uh, National Academy of Design. American Academy of Arts and Sciences and the American Philosophical Society uh, have also made her a member. In 2021, Billy was appointed by President Biden to the U.S. Commission of Fine Arts, serving as the first Asian American and woman to be its chair. She is steadfast in her mission to create a better world through architecture and support a broader and more diverse cultural landscape. Professor Chien, your works are simple yet complex in their organic response to the many conditions of the site and the consciousness unfolding within. There is immense care and sensitivity to connect the inside, the outside, and the most importantly, the in-betweens. Every architectural work of yours is unique in its material connections and tactile sensibilities. The complex manifestations of simple geometric strategies reveal intimate responses to sensory experiences, movements of people, shadows, light, and color in space and time. Your works are not inanimate buildings, but constitute an animate sensibility with a clear perception of interiority and permeability. From the two voices and from the many voices who make your work, the fingerprints of collaboration and evolution are clear in every detail you make with love. By embracing the beautiful and the sublime without hesitation, 
Your work shows respect for its denizens and evidence responsibility for posterity. Subtlety and slowness complement complexity and boldness of material, scale, detail, and the sculpting of light in its infinite dance. Your work bears no signature and yet unmistakable in its reflection of your philosophy and process. Your work is eternal in its possibilities of human experience, ennobling it and elevating every moment to a spiritual dimension. In the Tata Consultancy Services Project, you designed an intricately nestled campus in the Banyan Park of 1,400 trees. We liken the BAC to a Banyan tree, the great Banyan tree of Boston. And it is through how you spread the roots of your values, dedication to the discipline, and service to our world through design and nurturance, and always providing unwavering optimism that you are one with the BAC's values and spirit. You create transcendent architecture with a soul ennobling the human spirit. You leave good marks upon this earth. Therefore, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the Boston Architectural College, I hereby confer upon you, Professor Billy Chien, the degree of Doctor of Design Honoris Casa and the accompanying medal with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto. I now request Billy to kindly come forward and uh, be decorated with a medal and presented with a diploma. been an amazing ceremony. I, I've been so close to tears so many times, so I feel very honored to be a part of it. I'd like to thank Carol Wedge for making a connection to Mahesh. And I'd also like to say I would like to be preceded by a Dixieland band wherever I go. <laughs> so, thank you, President Das, for asking me to speak. It's a daunting task because while I often lecture, I can always rely on my images to fill in the blanks. So I will keep my remarks short. After all, you are the prime attraction. But I want to speak to you from my heart. It is an honor today to stand before you, the graduates of Boston Architectural College, your family, and your friends. So Mahesh talked about May 27th, 2022. And it is an incredibly important day because you are graduating after years of hard work, sleepless nights, and juggling not only the complexities of your own lives, but juggling as well the immense complexities of this inexplicable world. At the same time, it is also an unimportant day because it is simply the next step in what is the long dance of your life's journey. So for just a few seconds, I'd like to ask all the graduates to close your eyes. It won't be long. You're finishing your time at the BAC. It is the end, it is the beginning. What has happened during your time has changed you forever. Now, open your eyes. I want to tell you, every single one of you, that you see the world through a different set of lenses than your partners, your families, your friends, and just about everyone else you know. With your eyes, you've learned to connect seeing with thinking. When you see, you can't help but make judgments. This looks good, ugh, horrible, why would they do that? <laughs> Try giving a designer a present that they like. 
it's impossible. <laughs> when you see, you not only see what is, you imagine what it can become. It's okay, but only if you, if you had only done this. Designers are never, ever satisfied. So with your eyes, you don't simply see the color red. You see shades of vermilion, fuchsia, velvet, fire, peony petals. You don't see a building. You see a place for lives lived, weight, and gravity. You sense the responsibility to make places of worth and meaning. You don't see a room. You see a space that can hold emotion, stillness, warmth, and security. You don't see a city. You see a pattern, a connective tissue, or you see a ripped fabric, connections torn, injustice. You don't see a landscape. You see an underlying structure. You question the earth. You consider the future. You are different from those around you. You've joined a band of fellow travelers who can never return to who they were. You have crossed a border, and I have to tell you, there's no going back. Even if you switch paths and become lawyers, business people, chefs, filmmakers, you cannot unlearn this way of seeing. It will guide your life. You will always perceive the world in this full and complex way. That is what a design education does. You are powerful people. But I want to say what is special about your time at the BAC is that along with connecting seeing with thinking, you have been trained to connect thinking with doing. You have all worked in a professional capacity. And as Gabrielle said, you have chosen the longer road, the harder road because you have committed to a world that is real, real people, real problems, real budgets, real schedules, real contractors, real craftspeople. And that is why I said you are powerful. You leave with muscles that for many of us only started to form once we left school. I know when I left UCLA, having never worked in an office, I imagined that I would be sitting in a room with plants and maybe a skylight and that maybe the Bach cello suites would be playing. <laughs> I had no idea of what I would actually be doing, maybe having serious creative thoughts. I didn't know that practice meant communicating, practice meant connecting to many different people all the time, practice meant that even as I thought issues were tied up in a perfect little bundle and finished, some other issues somewhere else were becoming undone. Practice is never singular, even if you are a single practitioner. The great essayist and farmer Wendell Berry wrote, when we do good work, we join hands with those who come before and those who come after. Practice is shaking hands, wringing hands, holding hands with many others and sometimes you were doing all three of them at once. I used to think that the phrase, architecture is the mother of all arts, was about the hierarchy of design logic over artistic intuition. But after becoming a mother many years ago, I realized the truth. Architecture is the mother because as mothers, we are always organizing, cleaning up, and straightening out the world around us. We are doing the important work of the world. And having a child, and I hear some in the audience, which is truly wonderful, while creating chaos in my carefully designed and ordered life, cracked me open to be more spontaneous and also to feel a responsibility to a future that was not my own. My son's gift to me was the profound knowledge that I would gladly lay down my life for his. With this came a powerful sense of empathy that I hope animates and directs all my actions in life and architecture. So while art feeds life, life definitely always feeds architecture. Powerful people, 
I call you that because you've worked in the world and are realists. Yet you remain committed to making changes in the physical world. You understand what it takes, how hard it is to make something real in the world, and you still want to try. You are optimistic realists. This is the only way that the world becomes a better, more beautiful, and more just place. I want to close by reading a poem, a short poem, by Naomi Shihab Nye. Nye is a Palestinian-American poet and novelist, and it is called Kindness. I want to leave these words with you because, as we have now established, you are powerful people in the world. And as Mahesh spoke, thinking about the 20 years in the future, you will be making important choices and you must harness and learn to direct this power. So I give you the word kindness to guide your way. Kindness has often been associated with weakness, but I believe it is a right and fitting partner to power. If you use kindness to guide your choices, then it gives me hope for the world. Kindness. Before you know what kindness really is, you must lose things. Feel the future dissolve in a moment like salt in a weakened broth. What you held in your hand, what you counted and carefully saved, all this must go so you know how desolate a landscape can be between the regions of kindness. How you ride and ride thinking the bus will never stop the passengers eating maize and chicken will stare out the window forever. Before you learn the tender gravity of kindness, you must travel where the Indian in a white poncho lies dead by the side of the road. You must see how this could be you, how he too was someone who journeyed through the night with plans and the simple breath that kept him alive. Before you know kindness as the deepest thing inside, you must know sorrow as the other deepest thing. You must wake up with sorrow. You must speak to it till you catch the thread of all sorrows and you see the size of the cloth. Then it is only kindness that makes sense anymore. Only kindness that ties your shoes and sends you out into the world, into the day to gaze at bread. Only kindness that raises its head from the crowd, the crowd of the world, to say, it is I you have been looking for, and then goes with you everywhere, like a shadow of, or a friend. Congratulations, class of 2022. What extraordinary words of uh, empathy, kindness, and wisdom, and, uh, and experience that we have heard. Absolutely inspiring. Thank you, Billy. Thank you for, yeah, yes. So uh, I would now like to invite our Vice President of Academic Affairs, Dr. Vic Liptak, to present the candidates for the various degrees to be recommended by the respective deans of your schools. The names will be read by the Dean of Students, Richard Griswold. Thank you, President Das. To the families and friends of those who are here today to receive their degrees, I offer a warm welcome and deep appreciation. And I welcome you, the recipients of those degrees, to the new role of peer within the BAC's academic and professional community. Everyone on this stage, your faculty, the administration, the trustees, everyone is committed to our mission of excellence in design education emerging from practice. You 
and the practices you develop in the years ahead are the proof of that excellence. Your BAC education prepared you to act through your role in designing the built environment to make your communities and the world a better place, to collaborate in designing for more equitable social and civic life, and to recognize and address the immediacy of the global climate crisis. Your degree is a symbol of your commitment to acting on what you have learned. The value of your degree emerges as you practice, as you realize your vision for a better, more just world for your children and your children's children, in which the built environment nurtures our planet's resources and elevates the human spirit. Practice and realize that brighter future. I now invite Don Hunsaker, Dean of the School of Design Studies, to the podium. Good afternoon, degree candidates, parents, partners, friends, and family. As Vic Liptak introduced me, I am the Dean of the School of Design Studies. My guess is many of you are wondering, what is design studies? It is a question I am often asked. Our specific areas of study at the graduate level include historic preservation, sustainable design, design for human health, and real estate development. At the undergraduate level, sustainable building technology and computational design. While these are the titles of our programs, let me offer one word that I believe better captures the value of our intellectual inquiry in design studies and what we expect of our graduates. That word is service. We expect our graduates both in and beyond their distinct areas of study to be of service in a collective effort to advance our human endeavors. We expect that our design studies graduates will preserve our heritage and culture tangible and intangible, that they will strive to achieve climate resilience in their projects. We expect our graduates to infuse well-being into building design to lift the mind, the body, and the spirit. We expect our graduates to develop real estate responsibly with ventures that advance the common good. And we expect our graduates to always be forward thinkers and creators in the broadest sense of what design means. I would now like to present to you, President Doss, the 2022 graduates candidates for degree of Bachelor of Design Studies and the 2022 candidates for the degrees of Masters of Design Studies. now the candidates for the Bachelor of Design Studies, Gabriela Lamoureux. <laughs> Alex Southwell. <laughs> Boilame Pierre Lamboni.
Jacqueline Maldonado. Paimon Tapanilon. And now the candidates for the Master of Design Studies, Rand Limley. Aisha N. Lane. Brenna Sapienza. Mark Paul Lazard II. Lizeth Velandia Alarcon. <laughs> Ted Tadillo. Marie J. Santiago Nieves. Veronica Trujillo Escobar. And now the people who are not with us today but are tuning in remotely. Daniel F. Riccarelli, sorry, Riccarelli. Juan Wang, <laughs> Tiffany R. Blair, <laughs> Vanessa Lee Gabrielle, <laughs> Gloria Asaba Giza, <laughs> Piamon to Panamon, <laughs> Anna Patricia Rio Sabater, <laughs> Andrew Parker, <laughs> Catherine Schofield. Devin Artis White, <laughs> Dee Dee Birch, <laughs> Jenny Fayakoff, <laughs> Shivani Patel, <laughs> and Jack Randall. <laughs> and indulge me one moment. Piamon, would you stand up? I want to make a correction. Piamon is a Master of Design Studies graduate, and as you can all see, she is here. Thank you. I now invite to the podium Maria Bealta, Dean of the School of Landscape Architecture. Good afternoon and welcome, parents, families, friends, and dear class of 2022. Commencement marks a special moment in your academic and professional journey as graduating students and soon-to-be alumni and as professionals who make up the core values of a culturally meaningful society. 
For centuries, communities worldwide have settled along the banks of the river, the Nile, the Amazon, and the Colorado River even, which of course eventually turns into the Rio Grande del Norte along the Mexico-US border. From the indigenous to the colonial, from the desert to the tropical rainforest, to the urban wilds that make up cities today, people continue to gravitate toward the, towards the river's edge as a source of life from which to draw fresh water, for trade routes and transport, for cultivating crops, for bathing and cooling, and to simply regenerate daily life. Rivers remain one of the primary arteries of civilization and from where urbanization springs. As cities continue to densify, blue-green promenades extend across the landscape, offering us cool breezes at the end of long, hot days. But access to these precious rivers and other water bodies is not the same everywhere, nor for everyone. Through the global climate crisis, we have to consider that the environmental threats are also social ones, with some communities impacted more than others. Your commitment as designers of the built environment must transcend these limitations and instead emphasize planning solutions that stem from principles derived from the laws of nature where systems cannot be violated lest they fail. And remember that these principles are not design formulas, rather they are guiding forces that now form part of who you are. As the next generation of landscape architects, you have studied these dynamics well and are now prepared to lead. Your admirable talent and diverse perspectives represent current ideals for how we consider spaces for everyone, influencing today's culture and reconnecting us to nature. Make sure that no matter what the space you design is, that in spirit it be linked to the earth from which it derived. Make sure that everyone has the pleasure of experiencing at least once the glory of the rivers, the water and sunshine, food and shelter, as your immeasurable gift to humankind and to the universe upon which we thrive. Congratulations, Godspeed, and may the forces be with you. <laughs> I would like to now present to you, President Das, the 22 candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Landscape Architecture and the 2022 candidates for the degree of Master of Landscape Architecture. And now, our Bachelor of Landscape Architecture graduate, Scott LeBeouf. And now the candidates for the Master of Landscape Architecture. Shi Yu Zheng. Andrew Charles Hovey. Kavita. Kavita Ramalingham. Nayung Han Nok Hyun. <laughs> Lillian Cryan. <laughs> Kun Ang. Immaculata Gil Cerezo, Nicholas Neville, Tian Lang Wu. I invite Denise Rush, Dean of the School of Interior Architecture, to the podium. Greetings, family, 
friends, faculty, and graduating interior students. You all have shown great resilience in adapting to 26 months of online asynchronous and synchronous instruction. I'm sure a little Zoom fatigue has crept in somewhere along the way for you as well as your instructors. All through your design, although your design training was not what you expected, you all have excelled at becoming interior designers. You have the skills that you need. Not only have you had the privilege of seeing your Zoom presentations and capstone books, I have um, the great distinction and honor to say that the CETA site visitors have reviewed your work from the last two years. The digital evidence of your work has met CETA standards and our interiors program has been reaccredited. Great job. I am so proud of you. Another positive outcome of the pandemic is your perspective on interior space. Many of you have had the great good fortune of working in an office while some of you are working remotely from home. From home, our world has really changed. Um, change is constant in design. I am looking forward to greeting you as your design professional, as a peer, in a few moments. Thank you. <laughs> Forgot my next line. <laughs> I would now like to pre present to you President Das, the 2022 candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Interior Architecture and the 2022 candidates for the degree of Master of Interior Architecture and Master of Science in Interior Architecture. And now the candidates for the Bachelor of Interior Architecture. Becky Chen. Caitlin Mary Kazunas. Jennifer Ortiz Palanco. Ibrahim Al Ibrahim. <laughs> Thomas Wilson Cook the third. Parker John Corey. Uh -oh. Luisa Ortiz Rep. Tyrong tries so relax. <laughs> and now the candidates for the Master of Interior Architecture. Ting Yang. Yue Wu.
Joan Liu. Ching Ching Yang. Kazi Nur, Nur, Nusrat Safi. <laughs> Elizabeth Curley. <laughs> Elizabeth Clapton. Jillian Blake Kazaz. <laughs> Isabel Sofia Lopez. <laughs> Ting Yan Chen. <laughs> Haritha Marita. I invite Karen Nelson, Dean of the School of Architecture, to the podium. Good afternoon, all. As President Das mentioned in Michael Barrett's design manifesto, he challenged us to make architecture that bridges uninhibited human creativity and the limitations of our environment to not only identify essential qualities of a material and create form, but also to consider the environmental impact of the material. Environmental impact goes beyond materials. These past years have shown us that we need to work together to forge a more just, more inclusive, and more climate resilient world through our work through our conversations, through whom we bring into those conversations, and through our actions. Our students, has, as has been remarked upon earlier, engage in the real world. We bring a great responsibility to our work. Our students build resiliency and demonstrate how social structures and works of architecture can heal us both physically and mentally. Our students are exceptional for their commitment to others and for how they give back to their communities. I am delighted that this group of soon-to-be graduates are in lively conversations with all the members of the public and that they will shape the spaces and places where we live. I ask each of you to commit to reshape the mentalities of peers and loved ones to address injustice in its many forms. Through our daily work and conversations, we must care for each other, especially the most vulnerable among us. It is now my honor and pleasure to welcome you graduates as you transform from professionals and students to professionals and colleagues. In the months and years to come, your architectural education and your design practices will help bring your expertise, your courage, and your compassion to help others. I hope that you will return to the BAC to teach, to mentor, and to share your insights and work with a larger community and to continue this conversation. President Das, I would like now to present to you the 2022 candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Architecture. Mm -hmm. 
and also for the de candidates for the de 2022 degree of Master of Architecture. And now, the candidates for the Bachelor of Architecture. Mildred Averion. Yeah. <laughs> Sabina Abdulmanova. Aziz Al Hajri, <laughs> Yosef Bougay, yeah. Jose Felipe Malagon Sampa. Ricardo Cesar Escobar Palma. <laughs> Yvonne Perez. Arland Halitai. <laughs> Giovanna Larissa Balani. Mahmoud Jallo. <laughs> Matthew Thomas Wendorf. <laughs> Hyunju Seo. Safa Azari. <laughs> Omar Taufik. Jorleni Posada. <laughs> Jacob Turner. <laughs> Alejandro Manuel de Pablo. Alexandre Costa. <laughs> Komila Rahimova. Christian Dalmer Kothe. <laughs> Ed 
Erin Elizabeth Carlo. Bradley Michael Cashin. Megan Elizabeth Morrison. Salma Noor. And now the candidates for the Master of Architecture. Joshua D. Thompson. Upasana Prashant Kumar Patel. Marjan Serg. <laughs> Duty Prakash. <laughs> Neonpreet Singh. Natalia Lazandra Bolosan da Silva. <laughs> Anna Heidi Merida Arce. Shaza Matar. Shagun Kalra. Almira Akman. Pelin Sevgi Terim. <laughs> Ross Samuel McKinnon. <laughs> Marissa Mayo. Ariana Nardone. <laughs> Alonzo Obregon Suarez. <laughs> e. Catalina Simonite. Gregory Ray Baker. <laughs> Ryan Hoppy. <laughs> Jessica Louise Gilbert. Jenna Christine Quast. Yes. Yes. 
Molly Hoffman Boutreau. William Jamison Beezer. <laughs> Lily Marie Valentine. <laughs> Kayla May Adams. Alicia Doez. Alexandra Anzovino. Jeffrey Gnarly. <laughs> Ashley Nicole Runyon. <laughs> Brandon Hervia. Ryan Bateman. <laughs> Gu Jenching Seamus. Monjong. Kristen Elizabeth Alexander. Tyler Pitt. Bianca Rosado. <laughs> Liana Rose Femia. Sola Addison Da Silva. Olivia Margaret Payon. Charlotte Rule. Gregory Scott. Logan Philip Tackman. <laughs> Meredith M. Rutland. <laughs> Haley Fazio.
Brian Goddard. Abraham Koshi Sakaraya. Karen Scherniker. Fidi Patel. Sheng Hong Shi. Alan Mugabe. Parnian Mahmoudi. Nishigi Yorngo, Lorenzo. <laughs> Kyle Lofredo. <laughs> John Ajibifan. Marissa Isabel Adams is Oludalapo Becky Tom Bosel Elizabeth Ellen Bredal Dom Campos Megan Ashley Carrick Sophie Clapperton Burjo Demenji Roida Omar Dwight, Scott Eldridge, Natalie Gooden, King Lee Gu, Lydia D. Harrison, Carolyn Kathleen Judd, Shaheen Kiyomarsi, Andrea Luber. Lisa Nicole Pabon, Jonathan Pagaduan, Lydian Patricio, Luciano Silva, Aaron Sagaro, Alexander Dean Strangemore, Jonathan Suherman, Priscilla Michelle Tamez, Brent William Twining, Karen Joy Winchoff, James Andrew Wingrove, Kelly Ann Weisenauer, Malik William Walker, Juachi Ju, Yussel Yoon, Julio Zamora, Nicholas Joaquim Zartasian, Yingli Zheng, these students are tuning in remotely, and we will celebrate the conferral of their Master of Science in Interior Architecture. Courtney Victoria Scarborough. Amanda Rocha Lacerda. 
Jolyn Hansen, Sarah Graham, and Mary Louise Boudreaux. You are. Thank you for your recommendations, deans of the schools. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the Boston Architectural College, it is my great honor to confer upon you the degrees you have earned. In accordance with the custom, you're entitled to all the rights and privileges that pertain to this degree here and elsewhere. Congratulations. Good. Well, graduates, now you are freshly minted alumni. So <laughs> it is now my pleasure to invite Janet Roche, chair of the BAC's Alumni Council, to congratulate all of you uh, who are our brand new alumni. Janet. My goodness, well, apparently, I'm gonna to try to keep this short because you all wanna like get out there and start partying. Um, congratulations, Gabriella, congratulations, Josh. Congratulations to everybody around the world who have now just been a part of the graduating class of 2022. You made it, and I'm so proud of you. You're now, as we've been saying for a little couple minutes now, you're now a graduate of the Architectural College, Boston Architectural College. I'm a little nervous, just like Josh. Thank you to the BAC leadership, um, the BAC um, President Das, and the BAC faculty and staff, and all my favorite deans, and of course, my favorite dean of all, Dean Hunziker, who changed my life. Um, <laughs> The board, of trust, the board of Trustees and the Chair of the Board, Judy Nietzsche. So again, my name is Janet Roach and I have the honor of being the Chair of the BAC Alumni Advisory Council. I am pleased to welcome you to the BAC's alumni community. We are, woo! <laughs> we are all a part of this powerful club of the BAC designers and let me tell you, it's a wonderful club to be a part of. Yay! <laughs> you can do that as many times as you'd like. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> we are so proud of you. This alumni community you have officially joined has also walked the same strong concrete halls at 320 Newbury Street, endured the same late nights, and like you are dedicated to designing a world that is inclusive, diverse, and equitable. <laughs> All right, just a little bit up there. Okay. You have overcome many challenges and you have been sleep deprived. Your main, <laughs> your, you have accepted popcorn as your main source of nourishment. I still do that on late nights. <laughs> and you have all, oh, you have all tried not to glue yourselves to your work, nor burn yourself with the glue gun and not to mention how to figure out how to get this model all in one piece to the BAC or show it properly on Zoom. <laughs> Woof, right? All during a pandemic. We see you and know how well you did. I can assure you I have, and as being an alumni myself, I have the scars to prove it, 
as all BAC alums feel your pain. There are many ways to get involved with BAC after you graduate. The Alumni Advisory Council's goal is to broaden the engagement of dedicated cohort of designers. We have the unique and I think somewhat awesome benefit of the BAC education. So let's build on our alumni pride, develop a little swagger, and let the world know why this place, our alma mater, matters. Well, we did a little bit. The diverse and talented leaders I see before me this afternoon reminds me of why the BAC and its 130-year-old history is so special. Again, congratulations on an incredible achievement. All BAC alumni shine brighter because of where you are taking us. So welcome to the Worldwide BAC Alumni Club. We are so excited to welcome you with open arms. Thank you. So graduates, um, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the 5,000 strong alumni community of uh, our college. Uh, here is my charge to you as you commence a new chapter in your life and career powered by your education at the BAC. We stand under the shimmering canopy of the BAC so vast, venerable, and splendid, of this great banyan tree of Boston and the worlds beyond, with its virtual aerial roots descending in all corners of a global network and a stewardy, a fellowship of curious learners. A 133-year-old startup revolution sets the world abuzz with its stirring vision to build a just world with transcendent splendor. You are the proof the BAC leaves behind no dreamer yearning to be a seer forever. <laughs> On behalf of the faculty, staff, administration, board of trustees of the BAC, I wish you all a healthy, happy, and successful future. Go forth and do good work and change the world for the better. And before, before we leave, I would like to express my gratitude to many who made this event possible. Thank you all for participating in this most joyous event. Thank you to our creative and dedicated faculty and staff for their tireless work. Particularly, I thank Shannon Thurin, Patty Wan, Katie Stiefel, and uh, our entire marketing and communications team, our facilities team, and those who volunteered today. Thank you all. Uh, and I also want to thank our wonderful media partner, Bearwalk Cinema, for their unwavering support throughout the day. And with that, the commencement exercises are now concluded. Live long and prosper. Thank you all, graduates. <laughs> <laughs>